never get enough track oh! Oh! Holy shit, I'm alive. Ooh, what a day, you know? What a day. It's been great so far. Happy Saturday. I got great sleep. Had 14 million dreams that were fucking weird. Um, one, I was like in a hospital, but like doing good things, like feeling, I don't know. I think I was thinking about my body so much. I don't remember. Anyway, having a great morning already. It's just such a beautiful day. I sat on a patio, listened to the goddamn birds chirped. Um, yeah. And, uh, What's good? Dunk Life Daily 38, I think. Uh, people buying my book, giving me great feedback. So if you want that, go get it. I might give one away for free. So if you want that free book, comment them below and I might pick a winner tomorrow. But um, jumping feels great. My body hurts a little bit. Um, but I, guess I have to say this, Life Insight, I want to go off on a whole episode about this, about my life insight, but I want to have a lot of good information for today. Not that that's not good information, but I have some uh, detailed information about my actual training that I think is very valuable. That while it's in my head and fresh, I want to give it to you. But my life insight is I'm an entertainer. I like doing this. I like throwing th the camera on, yelling at you, wh whether it's rapping or podcasting or making videos on YouTube. I love the entertainment. I love the thought of people consuming my stuff and just like having a better life. That's like the simplest, most general overall picture of what I love to do. And it's such, it was such a nice thought of like, what if I can make my life around that? Cause I was like, I want to help people train and dunk, but I think the number one thing is entertainment. So if you came here for the training and all the things, just know you're in for a fucking fun ride at all times. I'm going to find a way to make you laugh or something. You can't force it though. Can't force it. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about today, um, which is my training is my diet and my body and the mind-body connection and how I've made a lot of progress there. Um, I'm going to call my friend Justin too because he's been helping me with the diet and the physique and he's a dunker as well, but more on the aesthetic side too. So he's coming from like the aesthetics bodybuilding and then meeting at dunking and I'm coming from more of, I don't even know what I'm coming from, but we meet at dunking. We're both, uh, he's a high level athlete as well. He's a really incredible jumper, did track in high school um, or in college actually. And then, yeah, I'm just going to have him on the phone and talk about my diet because he's... I'm on point right now. I'm fucking on point. My phase is going super well. My hamstring's getting healthier. I did sleds yesterday, if you watched my Instagram, and I just feel the most lean, the most cut. I have cuts in my body I didn't even know I could have. And then on top of that, to make progress in those cuts and to learn about my body is the most intoxicating thing. And I put it on my story today is that I'm just incredibly fascinated by places I didn't even know exist, I can take myself. Dunking is obviously one of them, but my body's another one. So making progress there, I think is so important because when you learn that mind-body connection and you're able to do things with your body you didn't know you can do, then my lifting will get better, my jump technique will get better, and it's just um, understanding how your body moves is so important to everything you do training-wise. So I just wanted to give you all those details, and my diet has been really good for the phase I'm in because it's keeping me lean, keeping me light, which is what you want with jumping, but you don't want to be lean, like super light and super crazy lean, like a bodybuilder, because then you're going to have no energy and you're going to have no elasticity. Oh, here he is right now. Ready? Can you see that? Oh, I missed it. Let's go call him back real quick. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to discuss it with him. Come on. Carbs, 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 carbs. <laughs> What's up, dude? You're up. We're up. We're live. We're live right now. We live. So I was just telling him, <laughs> good morning, sir. So I was just telling him how, uh, how you were helping me with my diet and also that it's like the best it's ever been right now and how I want to be super light and lean, but not like bodybuilder light and lean where I have no energy and I've got no water. So what's the balance there? And what do you think I'm doing right with my diet? So because you saw what I ate yesterday. So what do you think I'm doing right so far? I think your consistency is on point, which is, you know, probably the biggest factor. Number one, number two, I think you're you're having a good balance and you you're really feeling out, you know, that mind body connection, what fuel your body needs to. So it's not just, you know, mind body connection into the mechanical aspect, it's also the nutrients, what you know, your body's craving what it needs and you're you're, you're staying the course. And I think the water, um, you you know, you got the constant feed of water, you got the constant, you know, good proteins, you got the constant good vitamins going on at all times, good fiber. So everything's flowing for you and it's been 
you know, a couple months and now you're drying out, you're lean, you're strong, and your, your output is probably, you know, approaching, you know, a little bit of a peak because, you know, your body fat is dropping dramatically. You know, any lower right now, I think that you would start losing energy levels. So you're really like, you're in that sweet spot. Now, some people could get leaner than others, but I think you're really in that sweet spot where, you know, you're using all your, your, um, your fuel properly. Your hormones are probably in a great place. Your mind's in a great place and your bounce is going to be in a great place, man. Yeah. So thank you. First of all. <laughs> so then, uh, you got it, so now tomorrow morning, like I'm planning on dunking. So what would be like a good fuel up night? Cause I usually have, as you know, like the chicken, quinoa and avocado, some fats and right. carbs. So what do you think would anything different or any, any other important things that other people should fuel up with their body for a dunk day? Yeah, I think, I think personally, you know, it, it's going to be a little trial and error, right? So I like the refeed and the carb load the night before and something super light in the morning, if not anything. Um, if you're going to jump midday, I would have a high-protein breakfast, high fats, and get your carbs in a couple hours before. And then, uh, you know, keep those, because you don't want to get too lethargic. If you're going to, like, carb load an hour before, it can be, like, blast. You know, your body right. absorbing it. So, you know, trial and error, if you're going to jump in the morning, try a carb uh, refeed, uh, you know, just a big refeed meal the night before and hit that caffeine in the morning, a little cafe. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, see, see how you feel. Sometimes I worship people. Sometimes people need, you know, that morning fuel as well. It's, it, you know, it depends on the body. But I would say I would start with the carb refeed the night before I get the glycogen storage filled out, have a, a light breakfast, stay light. So that's also, you know, we want to stay light and we want to keep those energy levels high. We get an insulin spike in the morning, it might crash our energy levels. Right. So you got to be careful of that. So, so what are you? What phase are you in right now? Are you still jumping? Well, you know, I was in that speed phase and I was feeling really good. I was probably approaching a peak and I hurt my ankle a little bit. So, you know, I can't get those speed reps in that I want to. So I'm just going to imagine I was bashing my skull at the rim. <laughs> and... Um, so good question here. I got a good question for you. Good question for you is yeah. that uh, since you got injured, people that like were doing well, like say for myself, I got injured. How would your jo- diet change to stay lean uh, but not lose too much? Right. So I would definitely lower the carbs because that explosive output that you're going to need, that you're, you're going through in the speed phase, those big high intensity workouts, you know, they're not going to be there. So your body doesn't need as much fuel. So if that was the case, I would definitely lower the calories you know, 250 calories minimum just to see how that feels and see if your body fat's staying there. Because if you're not putting that that extra cardio in, that extra high intensity, you know, those other calories are just going to sit there. Would you agree that you don't want to just, like, add cardio in slowly because then you don't want to lose your explosiveness? So what could you do, like, explosively while you have, like, a bad ankle? Um... I still like to do upper body explosive stuff, too. So whatever movements I'm doing... I'm doing them to my most, you know, explosive capacity, whether it's a curl, a bench press, um, because it's still finding that fast twitch fiber and that mind-body connection, you know? Yeah, I agree. uh, I think visualizing that fast twitch as well can stimulate those those fibers just as much, too, if you're really in tune with yourself, you know? You don't necessarily have to go through that rep, but if you're really... You know, in that moment, and you're feeling it out. Each, even if you're going through it slow, but you're picturing yourself go through it so fast. You know, I think that's something important to do as well. You know, for me right now, having a, a not stable ankle is, is crucial to me. Um, you know, doing anything explosive. You know, with my legs. So yeah, it's tough. Ankle injuries are tough. If it was a little more muscular thing, I would say just fight through it. But you know, I don't want to get it more inflamed than it should. For sure. You could probably, if you have your ankle tied and everything's stable, you could probably do some explosive hip lifts, I would think. Right. Um, you could probably do some explosive leg extension. So you're coming down, you're coming down slow and you're, you're exploding up. You know, that's, there's no tension on the ankle there. Same with uh, leg curls as well. Same exact concept, you know. Um, what else could we do? We could do some band work explosively. Yeah, you know, I just like the I just like the idea of keeping the concept keeping the concept explosive. Like even if it's just your upper body, keep that work because I think that's important for people to know. Is like you're not just like going to cardio to start shedding. You're trying to still with that right. explosive movements. Right, because it's such a it's such a uh, crucial time to to get the mind working that fast. You know, 
because we work all, we work a long period of time throughout strength phase to jump high. You know, it, it's it's unfortunate to have an injury, but yeah, you got you got to you got to deal with you got to deal with. You know, you yeah. can't always um, can't everything everything's not always going to be picture perfect. So yeah, make it work. All right, buddy. Well, I'll let you go. I appreciate that. Right, go kill your workout. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right, buddy. Talk to you later. All right. So that's that's Justin Sakari. Appreciate that a lot. As you heard, it's a lot about the mental. It's a lot about the mind-body connection, as I mentioned before. But stay explosive with your stuff. I don't really do – I'm doing more cardio now because I'm trying to dunk in games, but that's because I'm jumping. If I hurt myself, I wouldn't do long-distance cardio. I would still try to do something explosive. Even swimming I would like to do explosively. But something you can do, work around your injury, but stay in that explosive movements if you're in that speed phase. So as you can see, there's a ton of variables with whatever phase you're in. That's what I do with my training. If you want to work with me and him, we actually work together. Um, our training is uh, custom to you, custom to whatever ailments you have, and get you right. There's so many variables. Everybody's got injuries. Everybody's got different bodies. So it's about learning that body. That's why I was, I really wanted them on the phone. So you could see how much we focus on our mind body connection with our training. Cause that's the only way you're going to uh, give your body the right stimulus you need for what phase you're in, uh, what stage you're in, like how long you've been training, and then what your goals are. Because right now my goal is to jump my highest, sometimes your goal is to get your strongest, so you need to feed in a different way. But it's about fueling your body correctly and using that fuel correctly, and that's bars right there. All right. Now for everybody's favorite segment of the day, on this day in history. Every day you can make history, okay? Today's August 17th. Yesterday was my grandpa's birthday that passed into the realm of the unknown, of the beauty, of the love. So shout out to him. I love you. And um, August 17th today, let's see what we got. 1590, Governor of Roanoke Island Colony, John White, returns from England to find no trace of the colonies he had left for three years earlier. Sick. Um, oh, 1945 Korea is divided into North and South Korea along the 38th parallel. That's when it started. 1998 Monica Lewinsky scandal. Oh boy. Okay. Today in film, baby. 1979 Monty Python's life of Brian. I read life of brain and I got really excited, but my, I, I read it. Yeah. Directed by Terry Jones, starting Graham Chapman and John Cleese premieres. Why did I get excited for life of brain? That's not even a real thing because I thought maybe it's like a movie about like the mind that I could get into. Ah, today in music in 1876, Richard Wagner's opera Gotendamerung premieres in Beirut. Huh? Today in sport, 1933, Lou Gehrig plays his 1300th and 8th consecutive game. That's way too many games. Play a different sport. Do something else. 1300 games? Okay. And now from last podcast, my boy Tom Dunk's been a part of the Patreon gang for about a year. Dunk life. If you want my book, it's $1 if you sign up for Patreon. So there's that. Winner tomorrow, whatever. Support ya, boy. Thank you for so much. Everything you do and everything. And the mo- the best thing you can do for me is spread the energy and enjoy your friggin' day. We got a long day ahead of us. It's only 9 in the morning where I am. Enjoy your day. Have the most fun you can. Maximize what you... I'm an entertainer. I know what I'm doing. I know where my path is. What's yours, bro? What's yours? Come on. Let's go. Enjoy. I'll be here fucking tomorrow. And then my vlog. Dropping a vlog today as well from my dunk session where I played some games and some poster practice. So stay tuned for that. I also, lastly, put a question. Do you want to see my dunks on the podcast or do you want to keep my dunks separate? Most of you said separate. So I appreciate you voting because that was really helpful for me to see what you guys want to see. That's it. Have a great day. Last thing but not least thing. Toodaloo. That's dunk life. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem. Oh!